You could think of the human body or most biological systems as really, really complex machines. It's hard to really comprehend just how much your body is doing and how much your brain is doing on a sort of microsecond level. As a biomechanical engineer, our goal is really to understand how the human body is moving and working. If we can understand that motion better and how your body is controlling these motions, are there ways that we can find to improve upon that motion, to either make someone better than they physiologically could be to start, or when something does go wrong, can we figure out exactly what went wrong and then see how we can fix it? Never tried this before. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. This is, uh, you know, I kind of feel like I'm ready for my Iron Man debut. You ready to go? Yeah. Treadmill's gonna start in three, two, one. <laughs> Engineering is important to me because you really are solving a problem. You're not just theoretically thinking about problems. You're taking something and trying to improve it. Your time and effort is going to sort of improve quality of life for other people in some aspect. I was always interested in the Army from a young age. What really brought me to serve was, I was a senior in high school and that's when 9-11 happened and I grew up in northern New Jersey, so I remember it pretty vividly. You could see some of the smoke from my high school. But after that, I just thought it was my time to step up. I deployed to Mosul, Iraq from November 2008 to November 2009, where I was a construction engineer officer. Specifically, I was an executive officer for one of our support companies. I think there's a huge responsibility after being selected as a Tillman Scholar. Pat Tillman's name is held in such high regard, so I feel I need to live up to those expectations. I think it's really important that I push forward and work hard every day to try and do as much as I possibly can to live up to that name. All right, take your seats. Good morning, class. I'm currently an assistant professor at United States Military Academy at West Point in the Department of Civil and Mechanical Engineering. What are the two directions of polar acceleration? We want to describe the acceleration of a particle in polar. I teach mechanical engineering classes, but I also do research on a varied base of biomechanical projects. When I first got hurt and was told I would never walk again, I had a hard time grasping it. Before I came across this thing, I was just existing in my wheelchair. I put this on and slowly found out I could participate in life instead of just sitting in the wheelchair and exist. It was emotional. I'm not the type of guy that likes to shed a tear. It's like taking a break from your disability. An exosuit or exoskeleton is a physical augmentation device that can help someone function during a certain task. Currently, our research here at West Point really spans the spectrum from paralysis to performance. We work with the Veterans Affairs Hospital down in the Bronx VA, working on exoskeletons that help people with spinal cord injury walk upright. These prototype exoskeletons can really help, one, improve the medical consequences following a spinal cord injury, but also the psychological benefits of being able to move around and gaining back some independence. This is our metabolic energy expenditure system. So this will basically tell us how much energy or how much power it takes for you to walk. We're also working with Harvard Biodesign Lab on exosuits that are a little more lightweight to help someone walk using less energy. You can see the actuator cable come down. As his heel strikes the ground, those two points get pulled together by the actuator, acting sort of like an artificial hamstring. You can imagine if you're a soldier and you're walking through the mountains of Afghanistan, one of the big issues is fatigue over time. And when you do make contact with the enemy, you might not be making the best decisions because you're so tired. The research we did here was looking at the training effect of wearing an exosuit over multiple occasions, really to get a basic understanding of how does the human machine interface work? How does your energy expenditure change over time? Are there adaptations you have from wearing an exosuit multiple times where you're learning how to better utilize that assistance? In the short term, the goal is to really better understand that human-machine interface. In the long term, the goal of this project is how can we give United States soldiers an uh, advantage on the battlefield.
We are constantly still evolving day by day, year by year, generation by generation. As things move forward, we're gonna see a lot more co-machine human interfaces in lots of different ways. So I think it's an interesting question to see, is wearable robotics the next step in evolution or is it just gonna change the way we are currently evolving? I think it's important to think about the ethical considerations revolving around some of these devices. Do we want to be creating super soldiers, so to speak, in the future? And to what extent do we want to start reining some of those things in? I don't have the answer to that question, but I like being here at West Point working with cadets, doing the research to see where we are and how can we improve things. I like being in the center of it because I think there's a, a big role to play and that role is only going to get bigger in the future.